Let's take a look at example six. A person plans to receive retirement payments of $5,000 at the beginning of every month for 20 years, starting when she retires 30 years from today. How much must she deposit at the beginning of each month for the next 30 years in order to satisfy her plan? Assume an interest rate of 9% compounded monthly. This financial problem involves several steps. As you can see, we've got essentially, uh, we, we need to break it down into smaller components. We have um, 30 years of deposits. She's going to be retiring in 30 years. So 30 years from today is the big retirement date. So we'll put a, we'll label that. We're going to retire here and um, we've got 30 years of deposits and then she's going to make making 20 years of retirement payments or 20 years of withdrawals. She wants to receive $5,000 at the beginning of every month for 20 years starting when she retires 30 years from now. So 30 years from now is going to be 360 months. So 360 months she's going to be making a withdrawal of $5,000 at the beginning of every month. So here's my uh, first payment and five thousand dollars per month uh, second payment third payment and in fact we're going to be making withdrawals uh, over the 20 years and so when I draw an annuity bus around this we're going to have a total of n is equal to 20 years times uh, 12 each year there's 240 payments on this annuity how is she going to be able to make those withdrawals or, pay or, or retirement payments? She, she needs to save that money up. And she's going to do that by depositing some money at the beginning of every month for the next 30 years. So she's going to be saving up for 30 years and she's going to be depositing a certain amount of money starting with today. Depositing our dollars today our dollars at the beginning of the second month, at the beginning of the third month, and she's going to be making her last deposit of our dollars at the beginning of the 250, uh, 359th month because each payment is going to be made at the beginning of, of the month. So when I wrap an annuity bus around this, you can see that what I've got here is a series of two annuities, one right back to back, one right after the other. And we've got a total of n is equal to, in this first case, we have 360 deposits. Now, where should I place my focal date for this problem? Well, a reasonable place would be to place it right here on her date of her retirement. So there's my focal date. I'm going to label that as the focal date. And I'm going to say my focal date is here at year 30. And this represents the uh, present value of the annuity due of the withdrawals. So the present value of the annuity due for the 240 withdrawals of $5,000 is going to be equal to the future value of the deposits. Let's see what we can do with that information. So what's the first step going to be in terms of solving this problem? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is to figure out the present value of her retirement payments. What is the uh, front end value? How much is she going to need to have on hand when she retires in 30, 30 years? So that present is the present value of an annuity due of $5,000 per month payment. So working that out, we've got $5,000 per month. The present value of this annuity is $5,000 per month, one minus one plus the rate. And the rate is 9% compounded monthly, which works out to 0 0.0075 five per month. She's got 240 monthly payments and its present value needs to discount it. So that means we're going to uh, use a negative exponent uh, for negative 240 and divide it by 0 0.0075 and we need to multiply that by 1.0075 because it's an annuity due. The payments are made at the beginning of every month. That works out to, on your calculators, uh, $559,000, $559,892 and 71 cents and that's how much she needs at year 30 when she retires so what's step two going to be step two is going to be to accumulate the five hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars what does she have to do to accumulate the five hundred and fifty nine K we're going to use the future value formula so she's going to do this by making monthly deposits for the next 30 years. So we've got a future value formula and the future value formula says that uh, that she has to accumulate 559,892 and 71 cents and that's equal to our dollars per month multiplied by the future value factor one plus the rate per month 
power is positive 360 minus the 1 divided by 0 0.0075 per month. And because she's making her deposits at the beginning of every month, we're going to multiply by 1.0075 to the power of 1. And so we've got two factors on the right side of this equation here. We've got uh, those two factors, and so we've got a new equation that says 559, 892, and 71 cents is equal to R dollars multiplied by, when we work those two out together, you end up with 1844.4741 and so on. Store that in memory one and divide it into the 559K, and you end up with R dollars is equal to $303.55 per month. So if she deposits $303.55 per month for the next 30 years, if she makes those deposits at the beginning of every month, she will be able to turn around and make monthly withdrawals of $5,000 for the subsequent 20 years. And so this concludes our lesson on annuities due. Remember that annuities due have payments that are made at the beginning of every period. They, they, they only need an additional factor of 1 plus i to be added to both the future value formula and the present value formula to allot for that, to allow for the fact that the payments are made at the beginning of every period. You will notice that on your calculators, on the BA2 plus calculator, there is a function to handle annuities due, and it is right above the PMT, right above the payment key. There is a BGN. BGN means when the payments are made at the beginning of each period. So second function BGN will allow you to make the entries for annuities due. So if you need any help with that calculator use, be sure to ask.